and how that streamed over into the music. I don't want to say real beef, but there was definitely battles going on within camp. You talking about Rockefeller, Rough Rock. Nah, Scott. listen, it was real beef. We can say what it is. We Word. can keep it what it is because we've grown men and, you know, we, we, we've shown a lot of growth. It was part of hip hop and it was what it was. We're not going to get in depth and give detail, but the beef was real. Like we was really out there putting in work and we had to do what we had to do to be taken serious. You know what I mean? So if you heard a rumor and you heard a story about some shit, it's true. You know what mm. I mean? It's true. If people want to deny it, if people want to take away from the stories, if, if for, for whatever reason, for for business purposes, for relationship purposes, whatever have you, that's cool. I'm not here to make anybody look crazy. But if you heard the rumors, if you heard some shit, they're true 100%. You know what I'm saying? We heard some wild ass stories growing up, boy. Yeah. I want to yeah. ask you about um one of Big Pun's lines when he he said to the Fifty Cent rapper, if you know, I think he said something like, uh, "If you get to the Fifty Cent rapper, very yeah. funny, get your nut off." Because in real life, we both know I'll blow your motherfucker right. off. Right. Featuring Tony Sunshine, we don't make songs about you. Yeah. We don't like if we gonna make a song yeah. about you, it's gonna be on how we beat your ass. Featuring Tony Sunshine. Right. Well, that's just to show you how that was just to let it be known how official we was and yeah. how we wasn't willing to take no type of disrespect from no one of no caliber, of no race, of no age, of no kind. You know what I mean? And and, and um it is what it is. You know what I mean? They 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 uh they chose the, I guess they chose to come at pun and come at at, at, at some of the fillers in the in the game because who else who else in the game really yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying like who with, with no disrespect in no shape form or fashion you know what I'm saying and I say this because there's a lot of good niggas in the game and there's a lot of real motherfuckers in the game but at that time who was realer than us who was putting in more work than us because we had to prove ourselves so there was nobody putting in more work than us there was nobody uh, 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 you know, making sure that we wasn't being disrespected more than us. You know what I mean? Word. But see, and then you open up doors and open up arms to a woman like Remy, black woman, but from the Bronx. So talk about how that came about and how Remy came into the squad. Uh, Sunkiss. I believe Sunkiss was Sunkiss was going to the store and he bumped into Remy and. You know, uh, one 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 thing led to another. Remy ended up spitting for him, and he brought her back around the corner. And you know, she spit for me and Pun, and she spit for Pun, and and, and and that was it. You know, Pun was a type of individual. Like I told you, what he did to me, what he did to me was we're gonna be friends forever, and that's it, whether you like it or not. That's what he did to Remy. Oh shit, you are my artist. You with me from here on in. That is it. You don't believe me? I'm. You know, he would pull up at the crib, honk the horn, make her come downstairs, you know. And he, you know, she had a little boyfriend at the time and I had a little girlfriend at the time and shit like that. And Pun was like, y'all staying over. What you mean we staying over? Yeah, we putting the sheet, we putting the sheets across the wall this way. We getting the air mattresses and you sleeping there and you sleeping there. You sleeping here because we all best friends. Y'all not going nowhere. Mm. On some weird shit. But that's the way he was. If he loved you, he loved you. And that was it, man. You know what I mean? Pun fell in love with Remy immediately. Bought her to Joe, and Joe heard her, and that was it. She was Terror Squad. It was nothing to talk about. You know what I mean? It was nothing to talk about. Where do you think your name falls when it comes to top R&B artists from the 90s, man? Our 90s R&B was probably the greatest era. <laughs> and your hooks are on some of the greatest. I say, I, 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 uh, you know, I came in the game late, late late 90s like 99 mm -hmm. you know what i mean so when, when we say 90s i prefer for people to say early 2000s because mm -hmm. i really you know i really came in like right in the beginning of a, a, a two g's was where i really started getting the recognition and my name started being heard and i really started jumping on records and putting music out you know uh i can't even tell you i wouldn't even i wouldn't even dare categorize myself because I never put out a debut album, you know right. what I mean? There's just so many great R&B singers with catalogs of music that for me to take away from them and try to try to put myself on a list 
it, it, it wouldn't make no sense. Now, as far as vocals go, as far as being a vocalist and as far as having skill, I will fuck your favorite R and B singer up on stage. Uh oh. <laughs> you can have you can have the flyers records, I give you that. The wax, the this, the the, the producers, the budget, the videos, the bitches, the cars, the houses, the you can have that. When we touch that stage and that auto tune is off and your background singers don't got your back, I'm gonna blow you out the fucking water. I promise you on my mother. That's to this day. Till this day, right now. Till this day, right now. I'm giving your favorite R&B singer, new, old, uh, uh, platinum, gold, whoever, however, wherever. Put me in the studio with them. Put me in the booth and then put me on stage. I'm going to fuck you up. You know what I'm saying? My only problem is that I never received the proper platform I deserved. And you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, with all due respect, the proper backing I deserved. But, you know, as far as, as skill goes, as far as talent goes, I feel like I'm one of the artists left from that era that could still hang with these young boys. Like, I, I respect the evolution of the game. I love music. I, 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 I love all kinds of genres. I study it. I, I do it in my sleep. I, right now, as I'm speaking to you, I'm humming in my head. Is is inevitable is what I do. So I don't care. You could put me with the baby. You could put me with Drake. You could put me with an old school nigga. You could put me with whoever you want. I guarantee you, we gonna make a smash if you give me the right platform. No doubt. Now I think you know you explained your decision to leave Terror Squad and didn't go back. You know later on, I think you left uh, at one point in two thousand eight and went back years later. What was behind that? Yeah. Well, what happens is this: after Pun passed. Like I said, individually, we all we all felt a certain kind of way, not towards each other, but uh, everybody had their own their own situation going on. And, you know, like Joe explained in some of his interviews at that time, he got depressed and he was going through a silent depression. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. You know what I mean? I was too busy going through my trials and tribulations and being a spoiled little brother. I was being a spoiled artist and. I had my own issues where I wasn't trying to see anyone else's just like Remy had hers and everybody had theirs. And, you know, um, Joe was making music and he had songs with R. Kelly and he got songs with Jay Holiday. He had songs with a lot of R&B singers. And at the time I was just going through an emotional roller coaster because, you know, I was signed to Loud and Loud had folded and then I went and signed to Jive and, you know, Jive had an issue and, just, you know, I was going through an emotional roller coaster with my career, and I felt like if Big Bro threw me on some of them smash hit records, it could help me elevate. You know what I mean? And so just one day going through my 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 depressions and my bullshit and you know, uh just keeping it real, I turned on I turned on the television and I seen I seen the uh, Baby I Won't Tell record with Joe and Jay Holiday, and I had heard the record. I just ain't hear it with Jay Holiday on it. I didn't know he was on the record. I didn't even know they had shot the video to the record, and I just felt like how how I don't know. How didn't I know about this? You know what I mean? And that just, you know, uh, that sent me on a big emotional roller coaster, and I just felt like, you know what? I've given Terror Squad a numerous amount of record deals. I've given them the best years of my life. I'm getting older. You know, maybe I should try to uh, step off and, and try my hand at putting my own career in my own hands. And that's what I did. I walked away as a perfect gentleman. Joe and I never had no outstanding beef or no arguments. You know, Joe never robbed me for no money. It was never about no bread or no no nothing. It was simply about music. I just felt like he and I could do bigger things as far as music goes. And, you know, um, I didn't know that he was going through his shit. He didn't know I was going through mine. Nobody knew Remy was going through hers. And that's just a recipe for destruction, I guess. You know what I mean? Right. Being as though you was close to Big Pun, how did it, how did it feel? How did you take it when you seen her kind of coming at Fat Joe? And accusing him of some stuff and him kind of going back and forth. Did you take that personal or did you kind of step back and um, let them handle their little situation back in the day? Well, like I said, everybody was going through their own shit. So I was I was just uh, hoping for the best. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I was holding on to what we had built for dear life and just trying to make a way and, 
and and but everybody was already going through their turmoil. So uh, when she was when as she as she was making her diss tracks and she was uh, expressing her anger and her shit, I was already I was already putting my best foot forward at leaving. You know what I mean? So I was already focused on making the exit myself and I wasn't I wasn't really too focused on Remy and Joe's beef. <laughs> no, I, I, I was speaking more so of um Liza Rios and her coming um um coming at a uh, fat Joe and the videos that she did. Yeah, saying, that's um that's also right. something I just I just uh stay away from that. You know what I mean? They have an understanding as far as as far as Pun and Joe's business uh, transactions and deals and paperwork, I wasn't in the room when they put the papers together. I wasn't there when the papers were signed, nor did I have a conversation with them. So that's just something that I play my position. I mind my business and let them handle it. You know what I mean? I know the real. I know what I believe and I know what I know. But again, that's just something where Joe is my big brother. I love him. And Liza is my other brother's wife. So right. I'm stuck in a position where I just gotta, you know, play my role and in, in my mind. Respect. Right. Go. I, I got one more question. Um, don't wanna be a player. Um, when you what you I heard something you're supposed to be on that before, Joe. How would that work out? No, 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 no. It's Joe, uh uh for, for Pun's first album, for fun, for Pun's first album, I had left the block and I was on the run for for, for Okay. For some that we ain't even got to talk about, you know what I mean. And Word. but for Pun's second album, I was on about seventy-five percent of the records. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. And uh, when he passed away, I guess, I guess for uh, pop political purposes and shit like that, they felt like putting a a, a, a bigger A-list artist and people that was already moving and making noise on the record. So they took me off of quite a few records. And uh, the most significant record that really bothered me was It's So Hard. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So It's So Hard, you know, I, I co-wrote I co I co the hook. Mm. I sang the hook with my entire heart. You know, it was a record that was near and dear to me. And uh, they felt like they needed to get someone else on it. So they put R.L. They tried to get R.L. to sing it. And they wasn't really too fond of how our RL sang it, so they had Darnell Jones come in the studio. Mm -hmm. And uh, I worked with Darnell Jones for about like two days till we got it right. And if you really listen to, shout out to Darnell Jones, incredible guy, extremely talented dude. I'm a big fan of his shit, extremely big fan. Um, I had him in the studio for about two days till we got it right. And if you really listen to the record, it is really me singing. Mm -hmm. And they took a, a, a track of Darnell Jones' lead and they put it on top of mine. So if you listen to the backgrounds and you listen to the riffs and all that, it's really me singing on that record. You know what I mean? Um, they took Loco Bananas off of the album. They, you know, I was on that Pun's whole idea of, of having me on the album was like a major introduction to the world of me. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? This is Tony Sunshine. This is who he is. And guess what? He's on half of my album. You know, after that, it was my turn to go. You know what I mean? 